In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and install Ansible. I'm going to show you how to do that in a GNS3 environment, as well as how to do it if you're running a different environment. Now, before going any further, let me mention the Network Automation Appliance. The easiest way to get started in GNS3 is to use the Network Automation Appliance. Please see my other videos on how to integrate the network automation appliance in GNS3. The reason why this is the easiest appliance to use is that Ansible is pre-installed on this appliance. So without doing anything, this device is not connected to any other devices. I haven't installed any software. Notice Ansible hyphen or dash if you prefer. So Ansible dash dash or hyphen hyphen version shows us that this appliance has Ansible version 2.3.1.0 installed and it's using Python 2.7. So just by integrating the network automation appliance in GNS3, you already have Ansible. You don't need to connect it to the internet. You don't have to install anything. Ansible is pre-installed on this appliance. Now, a great place to go for information is the Ansible documentation at docs.ansible.com. In these videos, I'm using Ansible and not Ansible Tower. So I'm going to click on Ansible documentation. Click on introduction and then click on installation. Ansible can be installed on various operating systems, including Ubuntu, FreeBSD, Mac OS X, Solaris, and Arch Linux. You can download Ansible from multiple places, in, including from GitHub. You can also keep track of bugs and features via GitHub. So what will be installed? Ansible by default manages machines using the SSH protocol. You don't have to add a database or start daemons or keep services running with Ansible. It's a very basic installation and you only need to install it on a single machine such as your laptop, which allows you to manage multiple devices from a central point. When Ansible manages remote machines, it does not leave software installed or running on them. So you don't have to think about how to upgrade Ansible when moving to a new release. This is one of the reasons why Ansible is so popular for networking. It's agentless. You don't have to install an agent on the devices that you're managing. This is great for networking devices because all you need is SSH. Scrolling down in this document, we can see control machine requirements. The control machine is the machine that you're running Ansible on and that you're using to control or manage network devices. So it could be your laptop or a Docker container in GNS3. Ansible can run on any machine with Python 2.6 or 2.7 installed. Notice Windows is not supported for the control machine. This is one of the reasons that network engineers need to learn Linux. It's becoming more and more important that you learn Linux because a lot of open source applications run on Linux. It's worth your while learning Linux if you don't know it already. Now, please note that Ansible 2.2 introduces a tech preview of support for Python 3. So at the time of this recording, Ansible requires Python 2.6 or 2.7. Also note that some modules and plugins have additional requirements. So depending on the modules that you're using, you may need to do more than I'm showing you here. So if you're gonna use modules for managing servers or Windows devices, you may need to install additional software. That doesn't apply to the management of network devices for basic SSH management. But as an example, if you're gonna use Ansible with Napalm, you need to have Napalm installed on your control machine. On the managed nodes, such as your routers, you essentially just need SSH. You may also need to use secure file transfer protocol, 
but for this course we're basically going to be using SSH. There's also a raw module that allows you to execute commands in a quick and dirty way. And I'll show you that later in the course. That makes things even more simple. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Ansible on an Ubuntu host. But if you're using another operating system, other methods are shown here, including the installation on macOS via pip. So you could do something like this. So there are various ways to install Ansible. Now, if you decide not to use the network automation appliance and want to use an Ubuntu host, either by using a Docker container or a virtual machine or your physical machine, you need to install Ansible. In this example, I'm going to use the Ubuntu Docker container in GNS3. You don't have to do it this way, but this shows you the process of installing Ansible. Now I've been told that some people have had issues with the Ubuntu Docker container in GNS3, specifically Windows users. Please have a look at some of the troubleshooting videos that show you how to solve some of the problems. If you have problems with this built-in switch, have a look at using the open V switch switch in its place. So if you do decide to use the open V switch switch, just make sure that you connect to any port apart from Ethernet zero. So connect your hosts and the NAT cloud to Ethernet one, two, three, and so forth, but don't use Ethernet zero. That's a management port on the open V switch switch. I'm gonna delete that from this topology and I'm gonna start up the Ubuntu container and open up a console. So here it is. I've config at the moment shows me that I don't have an IP version 4 address. So I'm going to use nano Etsy network interfaces and I'm going to uncomment those two lines and then I'm going to save the file. So again, command is nano Etsy network interfaces. Uncomment these two lines if you want to use DHCP. The NAT cloud is allocating IP addresses through DHCP. If you have problems with a NAT cloud, use a Cisco router or another device to allocate IP addresses and give you internet connectivity. So I'll exit out of there. Stop the device, start it again, and open up a console. Here's the new console. And you can see that the device has obtained an IP address. So I have config. This is the IP address of my Ubuntu host. And I can ping google.com. So back in the Ansible documentation, this is the first command we need to run. So I'll paste that command in. Now we don't use sudo here because we already root. So I'm going to say apt get install. Now we need to do an apt get update first. So apt get update. And then we'll run apt get install software properties common. And say yes to install the software. So I'm going to copy the next command without sudo and paste that in. So apt add repository, press enter to add it. Repository has been added. And then we do an apt get update again. And now we can install Ansible. Before I run that command, notice Ansible hyphen hyphen version doesn't work. But now I'm going to say apt get install Ansible to install Ansible. Ansible is then installed. And notice now Ansible hyphen hyphen version or dash dash version 
we can see that the version of Ansible installed is 2.3.1.0. Python version is 2.7.12. So again, clear. Ansible dash dash version. There's our version of Ansible that's installed. But again, on the network automation container, Ansible is pre-installed. So you don't have to go through this process of installing Ansible. Simply bring the network automation container into your Genius 3 environment and you'll get Ansible. So in this video, I showed you how to install Ansible. Ansible is not supported on a Windows PC. You typically want to run a Linux PC or Mac OS. The GNS3 network automation container already has Ansible installed. So that's the easiest way to get started with Ansible in a GNS3 environment. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.